So I've been slightly obsessed with melted crayon lately. I wanted to see if I could melt crayon onto an already resined tumbler using stencils and then peeling the stencils up as if I were to do a peekaboo. So this was my tester. This was like a super random tester and it worked. So I have here a, an old stainless steel Yeti tumbler that I'm going to refinish for my beautiful aunt. And so I spray painted it white, I glittered it, and I put, I think that's two coats of resin onto the tumbler. I then cut out stencil vinyl with all of these um, teacher things. And um, of course her name is Mrs. Hinton. This is actually my second attempt of the Mrs. Hinton. I wanted it to be nice and big and bold. There are definitely a few things I would do differently and I will tell you what those are, but after watching multiple other tutorials on YouTube about melted crayon art, I hadn't really seen anybody do this particular method. So I'm using what I learned and, and giving it a, a good go. First thing is that you need actual Crayola crayons. Uh, I don't, have other brands but according to a whole bunch of other folks that i watched um they said you need this brand because it's just a better quality and it, it behaves a little bit better um second thing is that you don't have to take the paper off of the crayon although eventually in my spare time i ended up soaking the crayons in water and peeling off um, as many of the paper labels as I could, but it honestly is not a requirement, believe it or not. The paper doesn't burn and, um, you know, it's just not really a, an issue. So the reason I laid the tumbler on an angle again is from something I learned from someone else on YouTube. Um, no, and notice I had tried to do it vertically at first, but it was just not, um, behaving the way that I really wanted it to. So I decided to lay it down on an angle just so I could, I could have a little bit more control over where the wax went. But honestly, if you try this, then try it whatever way you want. And it's kind of a trial and error. So I knew I wanted rainbow colors and I don't know why I always end up losing the yellow. It's like, no matter what I do, I lose the yellow. Of course, by having it on an angle like this, I'm going to get the like horizontal drippage. And that was okay with me. I knew that there would be some blending of colors, but I certainly didn't want um, mud at the end of this. And so for the moment, I'm trying to get the colors as distinct as I can. Um, and of course, I'm using an, I call it a heat gun. It's probably just an embossing gun, but it's... Um, it's very hot. You have to keep your fingers away from it, of course, but it does the job beautifully. And um, honestly, if I wasn't so concerned about the peekaboo method and, and having to pull up the stencil vinyl, I loved it the way that it was. <laughs> so uh, I've definitely, since filming this, I've definitely played around a little bit more. You may have seen one of my other crayon drip creations. But I was so happy when I went to test this method out with the stencil vinyl at how the stencil vinyl pulled up perfectly and that, you know, it'll, the, the pattern will hold with the crayon on top of it. So I was just so excited to try this method. Um, so melting the wax, um, but the, the wax, yes, of course it drips, but it does dry very quickly. So I did not have to, oh, wasn't that just gorgeous on the bottom? Again, if it wasn't for the peekaboo, I would have, I really would have wanted to leave it alone. Right now I'm just taking my heat gun and I really just want to push the color so that it covers the entire surface. Um, I did not want mud and I was starting to get mud. Um, but what happened was the heat gun was so hot that it actually caused the epoxy to bubble up and I did not even think about that as an option. Although now in retrospect, it's like, duh, 
because um, you never want to hold heat in one position very long with with resin. Uh, so I sort of took a, I took a craft knife. I tried to pop the bubbles and lay it um, flat back down. At this point, I'm just trying to get um, more coverage. I really didn't want the white showing through because in theory, you're going to pull up the stencil vinyl and, and that's where the white glitter is supposed to show through. So here's where I'm going to start. Um, <laughs> I'm adding more yellow back in because I'm like, I don't want to lose the yellow. But I'm just going to start um, blending the colors and kind of smoothing this out. Trying to, again, get full coverage of the white um, without heating up any one space for too long. So it really was like a delicate balance of keeping the tumbler moving, keeping the heat gun moving, um, adding more wax where I needed it. So it was a process. But anyways, so when I do this design again, because I, I will do it again, I, I loved it, I will not do the bottom at all, because that ended up being a pain, and you'll see why shortly. And then I will also tape off the top portion uh, a little bit, you know, even if it's just like a quarter inch or something, uh, because I had issues with getting the top rim to be perfectly coated with the resin, and I had problems with the bottom rim, rim being perfectly coated. And I will show you briefly how I tried to remedy that. <laughs> But um, again, I just, those are the spots that are so vulnerable and just unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't get them perfect. But this was for a family member and I have since given her this tumbler and of course she loves it. And I told her, look, if it starts to chip or you have any problems at all, please give it back to me. I will strip it. I will start over. Uh, no problem. So again, blending the colors trying to avoid any kind of brown whatsoever. I also wanted, if there were going to be residual drips, I wanted them going in a downward direction toward the bottom of the cup and not in an upward direction, if that makes any sense. I was okay with some imperfections, you know, see how some of those parts are more thin with the wax and some are more heavy. So here's where I'm still just like fiddling with the bottom. It took, I don't know, less than five minutes for that wax to start to harden up. So I pulled off the first stencil vinyl while I'm in my garage and then I go inside to sit down <laughs> uh, because the tumbler at this point is, um, it's heavy. I mean, it's a 30 ounce stainless steel and it's got all this wax on it and stuff. But I mean, it was just pulling up beautifully any little tiny pieces of wax that maybe got under the stencil vinyl, I would just scrape off with the um, pick thing. Oh, that close up shot of the notebook paper, I had forgotten um, to pull up the lines on the paper. And then I put a coat of resin over top of this. So that was kind of like a happy mistake that I left the um, lines of the notebook paper. And here is the weeded product. Even those nice thin spots weeded beautifully. So here's the other problem I had with the bottom. I went to pull up my star and it ended up making a shooting star, which is not what I was going for. So I tried to remedy it by adding more wax back in. Trying not to make it bubble any more than it already had. Um, trying to weed the star, but some of the wax had bled underneath the stencil vinyl. So at this point I'm giving up and I scraped off any of the resin that had bubbled up and I was just going to cover all of this with wax and then just resin over top of all of it and not worry about the peekaboo on the bottom at all. But again, in the future I would, maybe I would do like a reverse peekaboo. Maybe I would do an open stencil and put the melted wax on the inside of the stencil for like a star on the bottom or something like that. Okay, so I 
knew I needed to get a clean top rim. So I took a craft knife and scraped that off. I knew I could not sand at this point, but I knew I could scrape easily with a craft knife. It's, it's like butter. <laughs> at some point, and I, I believe soon I will show you, I did spray this with a clear spray, um, spray sealer. I don't think it would matter if you used glossy or matte. I believe I used matte just because it happens or most of the time it dries faster. So I was just cleaning up a few of the, um, so as I was scraping the top, some of the wax kind of fell into the nooks and crannies of the peekaboo area. So I was just cleaning those up. I ended up, I'm using a craft knife now, which I know is risky. I think I end up getting a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol and just rub the white glittered areas to make sure they're nice and squeaky clean before I do the spray sealer and the coat of resin. And that worked really well, the Q-tip with the, with the alcohol on it. Yep, there's the spray seal. Okay, uh, UV resistant clear. It doesn't have to be UV resistant as long as your resin is UV resistant. So I did spray it, I let it dry. Um, I also wanted to point out that I did use a blow dryer to blow off my surface before resining this. I've started to pay attention to leveling the cup and not necessarily leveling the table. The cup has to be level on the spinner um, but every time I go to do a new cup, I make sure that I blow dry my table because if you have ever used glitter at any point in your whole life, you know that it just shows up in random spots where you don't want it. So even though I blow dry my table every time I go to do a new cup, I still end up with glitter on cups that I don't want it on. <laughs> so this is just a regular... Coating resin, this is the first of many layers of clear resin that I end up putting on this cup to make it um, as secure as I possibly can. Thin coats are important. I think that was roughly 30 milliliters. Torching to pop any bubbles. Um, I, I also didn't want to torch so much that I melted the wax. So I was actually willing to risk some bubbles in the resin uh, for that reason. So here's a close-up of the rim. The epoxy did not want to grab the top of the wax. Um, so I put another coat on. <laughs> um, and then I think I even put another coat on. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is the best that it's going to be. It might not be perfect. I'll tell my aunt to let me know if there's any problems. Um, but here it is, fully cured, nice and smooth. Slight imperfections with the top and bottom rim, but gorgeous. The glitter is just amazing. Um, I put one of my little care labels on the bottom. That's the original lid that came with the Yeti. And I just love it. My aunt texted me the day after she got it and she had taken it to work and she said that um, all of her teacher friends loved it. So thank you, Aunt Hinton. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this and thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye.